Hey guys, it's Expanders. This video is meant to be an advanced tutorial for experienced pilots on how to use ECM to counter heat-seeking missiles. Now, there's a lot of confusion about this topic even two years after the game's release, so I hope that this video is going to answer any of your questions on how ECM works, how the missiles behave, when to use it, and how to use it. I'm going to assume that you know the basics, such as what it is, how to deploy it, and how long it takes to reload. So before we go any further, pause this video and read this text from Demise99, one of the core gameplay designers for BF3. With this understood, let's take a look at a sample engagement. An enemy heat-seeking missile will lock onto a helicopter and fly towards it, only to be thwarted by ECM. The missile will now orbit around the helicopter, attempting to hit that random point that Demise mentioned. The missile has three options, either hit the random point while ECM is active, hit the helicopter when ECM expires, or run out of gas and hit nothing. Let's take a look at some examples now. In this first example, the first missile hits that random point, and the second begins orbiting. But notice the position of the helicopter. Exactly. The missile runs out of fuel and blows up. Now, both missiles begin orbiting. But since the helicopter is inside the center of the orbit, it remains protected. Notice how the missiles will not only circle horizontally, but also vertically. Both missiles hit that random point and blow up. You'll notice that I jink a little bit. And this is to make sure that the first pass doesn't hit me. You'll always hear mention of an ECM cloud and how you have to stay within it, or how the missile has to pass through, but you'll notice that that's more coincidence than cause. You can also use altitude to your advantage. Many pilots will hit the deck or land in order for that missile to hit the deck. And this is because the missile may be going for that random point, which could be below the ground if you're low enough. Or, simply, if the missile is dodged, it might fly vertically into the ground. You can really use any physical obstruction in the game, whether it's a tower on Caspian, a crane on Firestorm, or a building. Alright, so here's a cheat sheet on how to respond to a heat seeker threat. When the missile is coming at you, ECM so that it is still active when you make contact. The missile will create an orbit, represented by these circles, and you want to stay within the green portion. The greater you deviate from this, the higher the likelihood of getting hit. Let's take a look at some examples. Many pilots will often fly away from a missile, thinking that they'll be safe. This often results in a hit from behind once ECM has expired. If you're low enough to the ground, this might not be an issue. But as a general rule of thumb, you should try to control the missile, not let it control you. Even cowards who like to camp with zoom optics should be smart about their positioning. Either easy and earlier to break the lock, or later so you can counter the missile. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Keep in mind that handheld missile launchers like Iglas and Stingers have a slower velocity than normal heat seekers so you need to be smart about your ECM timings. Lastly, this isn't supposed to work 100% of the time, so don't get too discouraged. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video.